this video intended for educational purposes. Hey guys, it's Adam AK Swingbird, and uh, you could tell that from my beautiful blue name tag there. Welcome back for another Minecraft 1.8 snapshot. This is 14W7A, and we've got a lot of cool features to cover this week, including improvements to something that was added way back in the beta 1.6 update. A few visual improvements, some stuff to help you build, and some awesome and helpful commands. Now speaking of which, you guys might have noticed the past couple weeks in these snapshots, the developers have added a lot of command block features, commands, map maker things, and a lot of stuff that, you know, most of the people that play the game won't use necessarily. Well, they have listened to your cries. Serge, one of the, the newer Minecraft developers over at Mojang, tweeted out a poll. He said, what do you guys want to see in 1.8? Between these three choices, either map and map maker features, survival updates, or work towards the mod API. Now the poll re results are pretty predictable here. 5% said maps, 40% said survival, and 55% said the mod API. Now I like that the developers are actually like going out and saying, hey, what do you guys want to see? And I hope this is kind of a kick in the butt to be like, okay, maybe we shouldn't focus so much on these commands. Maybe we should work a bit more on survival and you know, getting that long awaited mod API updated and ready to go. So we'll see in the coming weeks what they add. We've got a nice grab bag of different stuff this week though, so I'm gonna start going into that. Now first off, this beauty right here, you guys remember the old wooden trapdoor added in beta 1.6? That was about three years ago. We finally have the iron one that people have wanted for so long. It is activated through redstone, just like an iron door would be. You can craft one of these using four iron ingots in a little square. It can be anywhere on here, as long as it's a little 2x2 two two square there. And I think they look really nice. This is a nice little way that our, uh, our grates and manholes and stuff in cities don't have to be made out of wood anymore. You can kind of have a more secure trap door for your base and stuff, so I like it. I'm glad they finally added that. Long time coming for that one. A visual improvement here, there's a couple of them coming at you. So first off, this is how torches used to look. They had a weird stretched texture, but recently with the ability to edit some of the block models, someone was messing around with the torches and I think Mojang saw that on Reddit and kind of took it to heart. So they have fixed the torch model to make it look more like, you know, the actual torch wood on the ground, just add a slant. So it looks much better there. Now sticks and blaze rods. You know how we hold sticks right through our hand there, stabbed in there. That's how we hold a lot of our tools. Well, blaze rods used to be held kind of in a weird like display position on the side of our hand, but now they're actually held just like sticks. So there we go. We got blaze rods and sticks. They're so similar looking. I didn't realize that the blaze rods are much bigger actually than the stick, but I wish we would get some stuff like we, I've seen some mods where you can make tools and, and, you know, sort of and swords and different things using the blaze rod instead of a stick. I'd love to see that, you know, be added to vanilla. You can make little fire aspect things or something cool with that. We'll see if they ever do that. There's a survival update for you guys. Uh, <laughs> so resource packs. If you were to download an adventure map, the map maker can now pack a resource pack in that map, and it would just be a zip called resources.zip in there, and it would automatically load up when you load the map. So much less fuss. You don't have to put it in any other folder. It's just right in the map for you. Block coordinates. Now, if you go into F3, you notice that a lot of this has been cleaned up with coordinates and stuff. Well, there's a new little thing here. It will now tell you at the bottom, looking at. So if you hover over a block, it tells you the coordinates of that block. So it's very useful or useful for building here. So you could say, oh, this is at this coordinate, and then it, you know set your base at different stuff and help you count out building materials and stuff a lot easier now because you don't have to be standing right on it. You can just look at it and it tells you what it is. So that's a nice little update. LAN uh, spectator mode, if you open the LAN, you can actually set to spectator. So if someone is on your world, you can just have them spectating to, you know, make it grief proof there. So we've got a really cool feature here that I think could be useful for servers and map makers alike. I've got this chest and it's got all this stuff in it, adventuring gear. But if you look, there's another chest in this and it says NBT. Well, now we can actually do control pick block on a chest or a command block and it will give us that but it will let us place it down and it keeps the data in there. So this is all the stuff that was in that one chest, but I was able to place it again. Same with command blocks, you can control pick block. And then when I place this, you can see the command is all in there. I don't have to put it in. So it's a very useful way to pack, you know, copy stuff, put it over. You could do this to make little survival kits for a server and then just, you know, give them to somebody and they can carry them around, pop them open when they need to get, you know, the food and potions and stuff out of there. So that's a nice little welcome addition. Another thing with command blocks, I've got a few in here with different commands, you can actually place them with dispensers. So this is a random one, if I keep hitting it, we'll get different stuff, there's a bat, there's an ocelot, 
I've got also a mushroom one in here, but it'll randomly pick one of these. So this is a way you can kind of vary commands and just have them pop out if you want to have some type of random element to it. So this is one of the cool new commands over here. This is the execute command. It will actually target a certain entity. This will target a gas. So I'm going to pop a gas out of here. I'll let him fly up. And then we're going to trap this gas, gas buster style. Let me uh, smack this as soon as he gets high enough. There we go, trapped in glass. So the execute command will do whatever command you want to do, but it will do it from the location of where you're targeting. So I did the fill command and filled this guy with stained glass. And I can release him here if I do this one. It's going to do the same, but it's just going to do air at that gas. There we go, he's released. And then I'll just do a kill command to get rid of him. Out of here, he's busted. So yeah, you can do this sort of thing. I did another one over here with, <laughs> I trapped this little ocelot, the saber tooth ocelot in precious amber to be preserved for all time. There he is. He's just trapped in there. But yeah, you can target stuff and do different things. I have some other stuff over here. There's some villagers. And if I was to hit this, oh, uh, whoa, all the villagers turned into zombies. What the heck? And then, bam, they turn back into villagers. So this is just targeting the villagers in this radius here and it's summoning a zombie in their place and then it's killing the villagers to kind of make it look like they burst out of the villager skin that's kind of cool and then this one is just targeting all of them summoning a villager and teleporting the zombies way below the ground so you don't actually see them die they're way below bedrock dying into the void this is kind of a cool little thing you can do with execute one little thing here one last little thing so if i hit this we have a redstone clock going very fast and this execute command is actually going to clone the block that we have over there, the skull. So if I pop this, and then I have this one over here that is going to just replace the skull with air, and if I shoot an arrow, it's going to make a skull. And you can see that skull fly over, and <laughs> as soon as the arrow hits, it uh, it just kind of puts it down there, but it flies really f high through the air, you know, whoosh, there goes the skull. Oh, that one fell. There we go. It'll kind of target the arrow. And go on in the tree. It's that little thing. Let me turn that off pitter-patter of little redstone blocks there. But just some of the things you can do with the execute command are pretty cool. Over here, I've got a little area. So if you wanted to like set up a puzzle to get into your base or something like that, you could look at these two little things. So this is very similar to the clone command. We have this one. Let's see if you can tell the difference. And this one, pretty obvious, this zombie head is facing in a different way. So this command is called test for blocks and it's comparing the coordinates here of the first part. This is the first coordinate on this corner. This is the second up in the air. And then the third coordinate is, you know, showing where the other one is marked out. And you can set all these. Masked will make it so it doesn't count air blocks. So when these are different, it'll compare the two. But when they're different, nothing happens. But if they're the same, they will actually trigger a comparator. And there you go, that activated to show you that they're the same. So you could use these for little puzzles and stuff and maps or different things to let somebody into your base. They have to know the right password of how to lay things down. So it's pretty cool. Very similar to the clone command there. So over here, we've got some crazy inventory stuff. This is another way you could do little RPG powers and stuff like that. I'll go through real quick. So this one actually tests where your inventory slot is, or what's in an inventory slot, and you can actually use a comparator. So I have this set up where if I was to put on these leather boots, bam, we have a speed boost. So this is the type of thing where it's like, maybe you want to make diamond armor really slow to move to, you know, balance it, and maybe make leather armor give you a little boost because it's so much lighter, that sort of thing. I can also do it with gold. I have another one set over here with the gold boots, and it's checking slot 100B for little boots there. And now, because gold can be easily enchanted, I have a crazy magic jump boost. So it's giving me that effect. If it's not go on me, then it will go to the other way and it will not light this, and then it will your, it'll light it up and just get rid of my effect there, so you can not have your potion effect immediately after you take it off. I've got one here too that's pretty crazy. This is checking for the last slot in my inventory to make sure it's selected and make sure I have this item in here, the Cursed Blade of Dunkus. This is it here. It is a very powerful, uh, sharp, burny sword, but the only back draw is, you know, back back uh, lash there from using it is that I, uh, I, it's a double-edged sword. I have to deal with this blindness as I kill these villagers, uh, these innocent villagers, but as soon as I toggle off of it, it goes away. So you can do stuff like that to make little enchanted items and that sort of thing. So that's a pretty cool thing to mess around with. It just tests for inventory and stuff like that. So over here, I've got this little thing. Now, if I was to look up in the sky, 
Oh wow, it looks like rain. Maybe it'll rain. You can see it popped up in the chat. That is because we have these two selectors now. You can see them in the facing direction. There's one that shows which direction you're facing, you know, horizontally, and one that shows vertically. And I have this little thing selected here that says, if I was to be between minimum negative 90 and negative 89 max, it will make me say it looks like rain. I have this other one over here that I can toggle on. This will tell me when I'm in a certain area looking in this direction towards the, the flower forest there, it'll say that's a lot of flowers because I'm looking in the direction of the flower forest. You can even combine these to do crazy stuff. I'm going to summon this Enderman here and if I happen to look right where he is, oh and those coordinates, there we go, has to be the right angle and everything and he will teleport to me. If I keep doing that, he'll just keep coming over to me if he's not too far. There he goes. So you could use this type of stuff to like sneak, have a mob sneak up on someone when they're not looking and stuff like that. You can do crazy things. But yeah, this is just testing to make sure I look in that very specific set of coordinates there at the right angle. Pretty crazy stuff. Just another way we can do, you know, teleport and do different stuff based on rotation. So you're facing the right way. All that stuff there. Real quickly, scoreboard command commands over here so i'm on the blue barracudas you notice my name is blue above me if i was to switch teams to the orange iguanas i got the orange if i was to go to the green uh green monkeys i got the green thing that is because we have this new thing called name tag visibility and you can actually set it if you're on a team with the scoreboard it will actually tell you if you want the name tags to be visible above you if you want to hide it for other teams hide it for your own team or always have it visible. So you could use this to actually play a lot of games, and if someone's hiding behind something, normally they would have to like duck or you know sneak around to not have you see their name tag. But using this little improvement, we can make everyone's name tags not visible to make the game you know a lot tougher and a lot more fair. You can't just see someone through the walls. So that's kind of a nice little thing. And you saw it changes with the team color, which is pretty awesome. You can even see it in the inventory. Another cool thing here, it will actually show different uh, commands. I'm going to join. I'm on the green monkeys here. You can actually set commands on the sidebar based on team. So if I'm on the green team, you see it says zombie kills. If I'm on the uh, orange team here, the gold team, we'll have skeleton kills. So you can make it so only certain teams can see certain commands. And if you want to clear them, you can just, you know, do that without the actual command there. So that's a nice little update. There's a couple new things you can do with the scoreboard too. I set this up. This is Blacksmith Simulator 1314 in the uh, the Middle Ages is when it came out. So if I wanted to, I need to get back on the Blue Barracudas, and I have a little chest that I want to get in here. If I go in here, I can earn some emeralds, but I have to prove I am a very good blacksmith. So the way that I do this is I have to forge golden swords. And if I was to try to go in here right now, this will not open up. It's not triggering over there. That's because you can actually set what range of something you have to do. So this says I have to forge between 11 and 12 golden swords. And I'm not in that range. So you can set this min and max. And if I re just go over here real quick, grab some sticks, grab some gold. I gotta prove that I'm a master blacksmith and I deserve those emeralds. I'm gonna drop a few of these down here. And there we go. Now we are in range, which means if I step on this, it will trigger, trigger the comparator and I can come right in here and grab my booty. So there we go. <laughs> Just a cool way you can, you know, select different numbers and stuff like that. And over here, we have a uh, another thing called operation. This actually allows you to add and subtract and do different, mul uh, you know, math on different scores. So if you wanted to use plus, minus, equals, you could do different stuff. So if you were to say, want to see how many, you know, cer certain teams, like a total of how many things people have killed, lots of different math and, you know, adding numbers with the scoreboard system. If you want to make the little gold sword objective, this is how you would do it. You can use these new stats and stuff that came out not that long ago. So yeah, there we go. Most of that is the uh, the update right there. One other thing, I mentioned the block updates from last week where we had custom block models. If you didn't see that snapshot, you should watch that because it's pretty crazy. You can uh, you could make things into like hexagons or spheres and lots of cool different block models. Well, Mojang has tweaked this a bit. They've kind of restricted certain ways that you can do it now. And uh, hopefully this means that the, uh, the people who made those packs can adjust them and still have them work. But I'm just, I think they're kind of trying to restrict a little bit of what people can do. There was a lot of glitchiness with those packs, so I know I can see why they would try to you know, get in here and set some limitations. Because the hexagon ones would overlap, stuff like that. It was cool looking, but it wasn't perfect yet. So yeah, they've added some changes to that. A few of the fixes, if you were to do a slash weather clear command or weather rain, the time was never actually like taken into effect for the most part. I had some problem with this on my Pixelmon server. Now it actually does. You can slash kill ender dragons. 
baby pigmen zombies were running at crazy speeds and doing stuff like that. Gas wouldn't despawn on peaceful. Lots of bug fixes fixed. So that is nice to see. So anyways, that is the snapshot this week. A handful of changes, some really cool interesting stuff. But yeah, hopefully we will see more survival uh, changes in the next weeks and some more progress on the mod API. Dinnerbone did rewrite the inventory code to make it run a lot better, a lot less buggy, and hopefully make it a lot easier for servers to not have you know as much lag. So that's another step towards the mod API there. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Adam AK Swimming Birds <laughs> name. It's weird to have my name above me. Anyways, please leave a like if you enjoyed this, and as always, I will see you guys next time for some more snapshot updates.